You know, if I was looking for a location for a film, if I had the guts to put money and effort and energy into making an independent film, I might choose the fabulous indoor swap mart. Uh, what kind of an incredibly brazen segue is that? Well, where else am I going to find a plot line that includes stores that sell capri pants, a boa constrictor, and a corn dog in the same place? You're just not going to get that kind of quality out of the Disney Corporation. I'm telling you that right now. Indoor swap mart, hundreds of stores all over the place, and you know what? It's open only on the weekends. That's how select that crowd is at 27th Avenue. It's on 27th Avenue above Camelback. Could be a new location. I'm not telling you your business, Daniel. Uh, but I mean, considering the fact that everywhere you turn, there's a whole different kind of a concept, right? And the indoor swap mart, uh, geez, what am I talking about? <laughs> Daniel Pace, writer, director, producer, Michael Tassoni, lead actor, co-producer of The Appearance of a Man, about the Phoenix Lights. And uh, uh, Dr. Lynn Kitai has been on this thing constantly uh, because she took film and she's really been involved. Right. Uh, they were our lights, so we've been involved, but why you? Why me? Well, like most people, you know, I got very curious about it and uh, I was very skeptical. As a matter of fact, the night of March 13, 1997, when the lights happened, I was sleeping. So I didn't see the lights. But but you were here. I was here, yeah. And I, I heard about it the next morning and uh, I, I was very curious about it. And the more I looked into it, uh, the more weird they became, you know. There was not a clear explanation of what this was. So I started talking to witnesses and it became even more strange because here is a situation where people that have witnessed these lights, not all of them, but a lot of them, especially when they're witnesses, uh, the lights you know, up in the mountains and outside the Phoenix area where you know, the sky is, is more visible, uh, they had, it was like an awe experience. For many, it was something of supernatural origin. And I, you know, from my skeptical point of view, I thought, well, what, what is so, you know, in, interesting about that? You know, wh why would that, you know, even uh, affect you in any way, you know, to look at lights in the sky? And then you talk to these people, and they're talking about this massive, massive uh, light formation that just flies, you know, flew over their houses very slowly. And there was one man that mentioned also that when the, the moon was behind it from the angle that he was seeing the lights and he could see that this was not, this was not really a ship, that it was translucent, that he could see the, the moon through, you know, the, the what appeared to be a, sh a ship. And right. Luke Air Force Base uh, uh, did their standard, uh, it, it probably yeah. flares response, because no matter what it is, uh, if, if in fact a javelina belches, Luke Air Force Base will tell you that it's probably as a result of flares, except for the fact and these are honorable people over at Luke Air Force Base, except for the fact that the Phoenix Lights became the North Phoenix Lights and became the Prescott Lights and exactly. they kept going on and on and on. You have witnesses all over Arizona almost on, on these lights. Now, if you look at footage of, of flares, you know, it's very possible that night there were flares too. I mean, there's a possibility as well, right? But if you look at footage of flare and if you look footage of the of the lights it's very different you know they they're, they're different in the way they move is different in the way they, they, they you know the coloring of it uh, there's even some uh, depending on what type of camera you use to to photograph this you can see even smoke or some type of you know uh, artifacts around the lights that it really doesn't match what the witnesses report but the appearance of a man is a dramatic motion picture we're not talking about a documentary now this no. is not going to be on discovery this is going to be premiered tonight at the Harkins Valley Art Theater in Tempe, yes, the mayor is out in the lobby waiting for me to say yes, it is on Mill Avenue in Tempe. But let's not take a look at just footage of the Phoenix Light. Let's take a look at the movie. Unusual colors and odd shapes flying over the Phoenix sky. Someone is trying to make contact with you. The drawing is the clue. He looks identical to you. Today we call them aliens. You know, 2,000, 3,000 years ago they call them angels. Do you ever wonder? what you looked like before you were born. Do you know what this is? You have become a liability to the church. This is not your second chance. It's your last 
I guess I can show you this now. What's going on here? Who the hell are you, man? I got a problem. I found a guy in a car. He's not breathing. I think he's dead. Maybe there's no such thing as death. Me dying is just getting up and going into another room. What would the consequences be? Something to think about. Michael Tassoni. I mean, as a guy who decided a long time ago to become an actor, you've been successful, you've traveled around, you've worked on stage and in film and in television. But this is the moment that you had to call home and say, Mama Tassoni, <laughs> I'm playing a priest. <laughs> You made it, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you're right. You're right. And, and it, was, it was actually something uh, kind of nerve-wracking to take on because of, you know, growing up in the Catholic Church. But uh, Daniel's take on this character and how he wrote it was something so much more exciting and, um, from the priest that I grew up with that it was a blast to, a blast to take on. You know, we, listen, we deal in abject truth here, and we always do everything for them. So I'm going to acknowledge that if you happen to pick up the paper this morning, the review of this movie in The Republic is not a good yeah. review. And I'm telling you that because I'd like you to decide and to find out whether it's this reviewer that got it or whether you liked it or whether the other reviewers, because you've also gotten some yeah. terrific responses we had, we, in different parts of the country. Yeah, we had, and also outside the country, the movie played at the Monaco Film Festival in France. Uh, in Egypt, in England, uh, different film festivals throughout the world. We got several awards. And we found that uh, there is uh, two camps, people that get the movie and understand it and actually want to watch it many times. Like there was a review this morning in Channel 5, you know, that even suggested that, you know, watch the movie several times. And others that just don't get it. Because the idea with the film was to divert from the typical sci-fi structure of storytelling and actually take you in a paranormal ride. You Tell know? me what you think the Phoenix Lights are. Now, you've studied it, you've written this script, you've produced this movie, you put your life into this. What's your conclusion that happened? I think it has, uh, if I want to put it simply, it has a paranormal origin. It has something, it's something that we cannot really completely understand right now with our understanding of science at this moment. But if you look, and, and, and I say paranormal, you know, from a very skeptical point of view, because I'm, I am very skeptical about this, but it's, if you look at quantum physics, you can see also a lot of paranormal stuff going on with some atomic particles. So I wouldn't be surprised if many years from now, we really completely understand what happened in Phoenix. Probably not right now. And the only explanation is to show, like in the movie, the story of the witnesses, the people that claim, I had an experience or I, this happened to me. What do you think it was? I think it's, it's, uh, the script follows it perfectly in terms of it being a spiritual event um, that we can't explain. And it's not, that's what's so great about the movie because it's not about goblins and ghouls coming out, you know, and attacking us. It's more of a spiritual take on it and I, I follow it completely. I've got somebody else coming up, by the way, that had a, uh, an academic background in the church. Um, that is going to Catholic school. Kevin Nealon is here. And we're all going to be, after the show, comparing our scars <laughs> from Sister Mary de uh, All I can tell you is, is that tonight, it is at the Harkins Valley Art Theater, downtown Tempe, on Mill Avenue. How many times do you get a chance to go to a world premiere? You get to tonight and see for yourself a different approach to the Phoenix Lights. We're talking about the movie The Appearance of a Man.